Hello YouTube, this is GBay99, and today I'm going to teach you everything you ever need to know about counter jungling. Counter jungling can single handedly win you a game if you do it correctly. If you do it against someone like a Moo Moo, then you can set them two or three levels behind and snowball the game extremely hard, extremely early into the game. Now before you do anything, what you want to do is go into the options menu, go under more options, and make sure you have the show timestamps button checked. This will put the in-game time next to everything you say in chat. So when you're in a team fight and you smite steal their blue in the middle of it, you can just type TB for their blue into chat instead of having to calculate what time it will be up and then type TB in addition to the time. The next thing you want to do is actually use that to your advantage and always make sure you have everything timed. Blue and red buff take 5 minutes to respawn while dragon takes 6 and baron takes 7. Wraiths take 50 seconds to respawn and wolves and golems take 60. Now that we have the basics out of the way, let's look into how to actually counter jungle. You want to start off by timing when your opponent kills his first buffs. It should be around the same time you kill yours. Try to keep in mind who you're jungling against, and use your own knowledge as a jungler to guess and figure out where he is. If he's a Moo Moo, he probably started blue, or if he's Lee Sin, it's probably red. Once you figure out which route he's going, you have a pretty good idea of when each of his camps will respawn and where he'll be at different times in the game. For instance, that Amumu is pretty blue reliant, and because he probably killed his blue first, that means he probably killed it at around 2.15, meaning it will respawn at around 7.15. Stealing major buffs from champions who rely on them can help you out and hinder their team greatly. Take that Amumu's blue and he'll have a slower jungle because you won't be spamming his abilities so much. Or steal it because you don't want their mid to have it. Steal Shivana's red so she has no CC outside of exhaust on her ganks. Try to keep all this in mind as you invade their jungle and start stealing their stuff. Prioritize what buffs and camps you want to steal beforehand so you have a good idea of when to go in and take them. Also try and leave an appropriate number of creeps behind. By that I mean you should be leaving behind a different number of smaller creeps for different junglers. Always finish off the larger camps so you can time them, but leave some creeps behind on the smaller ones so their jungler will have to clear it out and he'll be a bit behind on golden experience. Like if you're against an AoE jungler like a Moomoo, when you steal his wraiths only leave one behind so he doesn't get much gold and he still has to clear it out. If you leave three behind he'll clear it out pretty much just as quickly while getting some extra gold. Whereas if you're against a single target jungler like Nunu or Warwick, leave as many smaller creeps behind as you can. They may get an extra 6 gold or so, but it will take them much longer to finish off the camp. There's this thing called opportunity cost, which I may explain in a future video, but basically what it is is when you're doing something, you could be doing something else. So while Nunu is taking that 10 seconds to finish off those wraiths, he could be using that time to get much more gold from farming mid as Diana backs. Another big important thing about counter jungling is knowing where their jungler actually is, and that means warding. Try and keep a ward at the big buffs right before they respawn so you can see when you can go in and steal them, or at the very least you can try and smite steal them. Another good place to ward is the brush around wraiths. If you can keep a ward here, you'll not only be able to see when he's doing wraiths or when he's around mid, but you'll also be able to tell when he's crossing over from one side of his jungle to the next. For instance, if you see him come from his blue side, then you know he probably just did wolves and they'll be up in 55 seconds. Even if you don't have a ward, still try to keep track of their jungler and use that knowledge to your advantage. If you see Lee Sin is level 2 with red buff ganking top, that means he hasn't done his blue yet and you can go steal it right now with plenty of time to spare. Counter jungling is a nice way to swing the game hugely in your favor, but if you get caught, you're in big trouble. Especially when you're trying something like going Nunu, doing your blue, and then trying to steal his red before he gets to it. If you're doing something like this, then you need to make sure you have an escape plan ready. Always have your escape route mapped out in your head. Never invade if you don't think you can get out if caught. If they ever catch you, you'll put yourself behind and give their jungler a pretty big lead. The exact opposite of what you were trying to do. So if you're Shivana who has exhaust instead of flash, try to not invade unless you have your ultimate up, or if you see their jungler somewhere on the map. If you enter their jungle and immediately one of the nearby lanes leaves, chances are it's warded and you need to get out of there as soon as possible. Counter jungling is a high risk, high reward playstyle, so make sure you're doing everything you can to minimize that risk. Continuing on this note of safety, try to be careful where you actually invade. Don't invade through places that are often warded like bottom tri brush. 
Lastly, my biggest piece of advice to you if you want to counter jungle effectively has got to be to practice. Theory crafting, pre-game preparation, and thinking things out beforehand can get you very, very far, but there's no substitute for practice. The more and more you jungle and counter jungle, the more and more you'll learn about typical roots and respawn timers and when it's safe to invade and when it's not and how fast you can kill the camps and everything you'll ever need to know. After all, where do you think everyone else learns this all from? I hope you learned something interesting and new, and hopefully you can use this knowledge to become a better player in League. I'll be having a 12-hour streaming marathon on Saturday to kick off the beginning of my stream. There's another video up on my channel right now that gives the uh, link to the stream and different times for different people in different parts of the world, and a little sample of the music I'll be using. Anyway, you can click on the annotation to go check that out. I hope you can find some time in your day to come and join me. And as always, thanks for watching, good luck in solo queue, and have a wonderful day.